Let's talk about budgeted hourly rates. In this lesson, we will define what a budgeted hourly rate or a BHR is. We will use the process of identifying cost centers to create BHRs. We'll establish a systematic approach to creating our own BHRs. And then we will practice creating a BHR by establishing a working BHR for a company or a hypothetical company that you may start in the future. What is a BHR? A BHR, or a budgeted hourly rate, is a fixed rate charged for a service per hour. It is not a random or guesstimated number. It is an exact cost that is calculated to incorporate all variables associated with a particular operation. It identifies the minimum amount a company must charge per hour for a service to break even. Companies will add to their calculated BHR to ensure a profit. For example, if they calculate their BHR to be $18.74 per hour, they might round it up to $25 an hour or even $35 an hour when billing clients. BHRs are associated with services that can be charged for by the hour, like time on a printing press, a graphic designer's time while they're designing, and the time it takes a delivery truck to deliver goods. Each individual operation will have its own BHR, these BHRs will incorporate all of the costs associated with that operation over a year's time, like car insurance, car maintenance, computer costs, the cost for an electric bill, anything that might go into the cost it takes to complete that operation will be accounted for. So how are BHRs used? A BHR is not the only cost that must be accounted for when generating pricing for a job. BHRs are combined with other material costs to create the total price for a portion of a job. The basic formula we will use to calculate job costs, or put an asterisk next to that, the portion of a job cost, are whatever we calculate the cost to be of the time on press using the BHR, plus material costs that would be chosen specifically by a customer, and that would give us the total job cost or the total portion of a job in the case of the printing company. In this example, we're going to figure out the cost to run a job on a printing press, but that doesn't account for all of the cost a customer will, will, will receive because when we are creating a print job for someone, we will have finishing costs, delivery costs, um, pre-press costs and other things. So you'll follow this process for each step of the, the job that you're creating and then you'll sum all the values together to get the total job cost for the entire job. This example is only for one portion of that and that's to figure out how much to charge a customer for the press portion of a job. So there are additional costs associated with a printing job that cannot be accounted for through the press's BHR like the paper that we're running through the press and the ink that we're printing on the paper with. These are different for every job, so we can't account for them in the BHR price. They must be charged separately so that customers that choose expensive papers and expensive inks get charged more than customers that choose cheap paper and cheap inks. So for example, it may take six hours to run a job on a printing press, but when we generate pricing for this job, we must charge the customer for six hours on press, so whatever the BHR is times six, for the time on press plus the cost of the exact amount of materials it takes to complete their specific job. We charge for material costs separately from the time on press because customers can choose different options. Some may be expensive and some may be cheap. The final price quote needs to reflect the customer's specific choices. So in this example here, the time on press would be 10 hours and the BHR is $250 per hour. So whatever job this person is producing, it's going to take 10 hours and we're going to say that it's going to cost $2,500 for that time on press. Above and beyond that, the customer chose paper that cost $600 and ink that cost $125. So in addition to the $2,500 for the time on press, we will also charge the customer $725 for materials to get a total of $3,225. Now again, it's just for the time on press. So we would add to that cutting of whatever they're creating, packaging it in boxes, shipping it to a client. There's lots of other things we'll add to it, but for the press portion of the job, we would charge $3,225. 
Let's talk a little bit more about job material costs because they're going to vary from customer to customer and from industry to industry and from cost center to cost center. Even within a printing company, the material costs for each cost center are going to be different. Job material costs are the costs associated with printing a particular job that are specific to the customer's decisions about materials, ink, and more. The material costs incorporate all costs from when a job leaves in the printing industry from when a job leaves the pre-press department up until printed sheets come off the back end of a printing press, excluding the time that it will take to print the job because as we've already established, we bill time based on the BHR. Some materials that must be accounted for in addition to the time on press are the plates that are going to be used. Uh, we charge for each plate and we need at least one plate per ink. So if a client uh, produces a job with eight colors, they're gonna get charged more than a client that only has four colors because we charge one plate per color. The paper and the ink that's needed to produce the job. Uh, if, if the job has non-printing process colors, the printing process colors are cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, we charge to set up and wash the press. So we assume that printing presses will always have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black in them. So we don't need to clean them out. But if you had a four color press and it had cyan, magenta, yellow, and black in the press and the customer wants to print with metallic gold, metallic silver, neon orange, and neon green. Those are four colors that are not in the press. So we would charge them to set up the press for those colors and then to wash those colors out of the press. The basic setup and wash up times are included in the generic BHR. And then anything else that a, comp that a company must uh, incur cost wise while the job is on press. So if the company has anything else that they're paying for because a customer made a decision about something, they would charge that separately as a material cost for the job. And again, this is just for the press portion of the job. So let's walk through a more expanded version of our basic formula. So we're going to calculate the time on press by multiplying the number of hours to produce a job times the BHR. In this example, our BHR is $500 per hour and whomever figured it out, figured out that it will be on press for six hours. So 500 times six equals $3,000. So the time that the job will be on press will cost the customer $3,000. Above and beyond that, the customer is going to have to pay for the following material cost. $400 for plates, so they must be using four, four ink colors. $1,750 for paper. Whatever paper they chose, however much paper they're using, will cost us $1,750. Ink, for whatever reason, is only $75. Maybe we're printing with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and silver, so we're only paying a little bit extra. Um, and then here, there is $500 to set up the press and $500 to clean up the press. So we always bill uh, set up and clean up for at least one hour. And in this case, when I see that there's a line item for set up for press or to clean up or wash up the press, that indicates to me that they are using a color that's not CMYK. So they have to pay extra to set up that printing press tower and then clean it. When we sum all of those costs together, $400 for plates, $1,750 for paper, $75 for ink, $500 to set up that one color, and then $500 to clean up that one color, the material cost that customer must pay is $3,225. So now, if I add the time on press of $3,000 and the material cost of $3,225, I would say that the press portion of this job, before I add all the other stuff to it, is $6,225. It does not account for anything except for the press portion. It doesn't account for trimming it to size, packaging in boxes, putting it on a truck and shipping it. All of those will be additional costs, but this is for the press portion of the job. We identified cost centers in our daily lives during the cost centers lesson. The same cost centers are used to calculate BHRs. The only difference between what we did during the cost centers lesson and what a company does to establish a BHR is how the items are organized. We created personalized BHRs for our whole life. A, cost, uh, a company will divide into smaller categories and create multiple BHRs so that, uh, sorry, multiple cost centers 
so that each cost center can be linked to a different BHR. So to create a BHR, we must first group cost centers together. For example, to establish a working BHR for a printing press, we must group all of the fixed and variable costs associated with that press for an entire year together. Once we know how much it will cost to own the press for one year, we can break it down into an hourly rate based on how many hours we reasonably expect to run the press for a year. So if we figure out that it costs us a million dollars a year to run a press and we're going to run that press for a thousand hours in a year, we can use that information to figure out how much we should charge per hour. When we do this, customer specific variables are not included. These are costs like the paper and ink that we've already established and they are strictly dependent on how many jobs are sold, the colors of the ink, and the type of paper a customer wants. We charge these as additional costs as jobs are booked because they will be different for every job. There's no way to budget for them in advance. We can't know on January 1st that somebody's going to want $10,000 of a specific paper on September 19th. So when a customer comes and they want $10,000 of a very specific paper on September 19th, we charge them to print their job and then we charge them for the paper in addition to the printing of the job. So let's talk a little bit more about identifying cost centers. Large companies will have many cost centers. The goal of each cost center is to include things that, the that cost the company money and earn the company money. They are usually associated with operations that can be billed for by the hour. For example, the prepress department might have multiple working BHRs to account for the price they charge to scan artwork. There might be a different BHR that they charge to perform color corrections and a different BHR to make printing plates, etc. So that when a customer asks how much it will cost to scan an image, the company can quickly tell them it will be $16 or $29 based on how much they charge per hour to do that and how long it will take to perform that operation. Each one of these individual cost centers will include the costs associated with the operation. For example, the scanning cost center will have a BHR that accounts for the person who does the scanning, the purchase and maintenance of the scanner, the computer that's required to operate the scanner, and more. The only thing that makes money for the company within the cost center is the time we charge per hour to do the scanning. Everything else is included so that we're covering costs that we cannot bill for. Let's identify some example cost centers required to own a press for one year, a printing press for one year. These are costs we will pay to own the press whether we print 1 million jobs or zero jobs. So an example would be the monthly lease payment. So our press in this example has a monthly lease payment of $3,500 per month. That means that after 12 months, we will have paid $42,000 in one year for the privilege of owning that printing company, um, printing press. We also pay $625 per month for press insurance. So when we multiply that times 12, we can say that we pay $7,500 per year in press insurance. On average, the electric monthly, the average electric bill last year was $900 per month. So multiply that times 12, we paid $10,800 for electricity. And then last year, we spent about $7,000 on maintenance, so we would want to budget at least that much for this year. So all of these things are costs on the press that we will have to pay, whether we print 1 million jobs or zero jobs. I will put an asterisk next to electricity because you're not going to use, I guess, all of that if the press is not running. But that electric bill is not just for your printing press. It incorporates the lights in the press room and other equipment and things like that. So this is a very short list, but in reality, a company will have many costs that need to be accounted for within their press's BHR. To keep it simple, we'll just stick to these four examples in this course, but please understand that there are maybe 20 or 30 or 40 or 400 costs on a list within a cost center. In this example, the total cost we should expect to pay for this press for one year of operation when we add 42,000 plus 7,500 plus 10,800 plus 7,000 is $67,300. That's $67,300 whether we run 30,000 jobs 
or zero jobs. Every time a customer asks us to print something on our press, we need to account for these costs by charging each customer just a small fraction of that $67,300 so that by the time we get to the end of the year, we have broken even. We've accounted for all of those hidden costs as we've been charging our customer. We do it by deciding how much to charge per hour so that by the end of the year, we have collected at least that $67,300 to break even. So let's use this information to calculate a BHR. A budgeted hourly rate, or a BHR, is calculated by dividing the total yearly cost of an, for an operation, like the printing press we just established, um, and then dividing it by the number of hours per year we will be able to bill or charge for its operation. Let's look at the example from the previous slide. Our yearly operating costs summed to $67,300. The BHR for this press is calculated by dividing $67,300 by the number of hours per year we plan to be able to bill or charge for that service. A company will determine the number of hours of operation they anticipate by estimation. They will estimate how many hours a press will be in operation based on the previous years of operation, the lifespan of the press, and more. For our examples in this class, the company will tell us how many hours a press will be in operation. The only thing we need to do is make sure we are comparing apples to apples. If our operating costs are based on a year, our billable hours also need to be in terms of a year. So let's walk through an example together. Example one, what is the BHR for this press if the printing company will run the press for 300 hours in a year? So this is the same example we used on the previous um, two slides. Our press is $3,500 a month, which we have decided, uh, calculated to be $42,000 in a year. We pay $625 per month for insurance, which we've expanded to $7,500 for the year. Uh, we average a $900 a month electric bill, so that's $10,800 for the year. And last year we spent $7,000 on our maintenance, so we will assume that we're going to spend at least $7,000 next year, so we'll budget for that. When we sum all of these together, you can see in step one here, we get $67,300, but we already knew that. So the only new thing that we're adding in this problem is we are anticipating that we will be able to bill, run jobs on the press, and charge customers for the time on press for 300, 300 hours next year. So in order to account for all of those unforeseen costs or the hidden costs of the press of $67,300, in step two, we will identify or calculate the number of hours for the year to be 300, and then in step three, we'll divide the total cost for the year, 67,300, by the total hours of operation, which is 300, which calculates to $224.33. That means that if I was able to bill 300 hours next year for the press and charge $224.33 every hour that it was in operation, I would break even and cover all of my expenses. If I wanted to make money, I might up this to $250 per hour or $275 an hour or $500 per hour, but at the very least to break even, I would have to run the press for 300 hours in the year and I would have to charge $224.33. Okay, give this next one a try on your own. What if the company that we just establish the BHR for, increase their yearly billable hours from 300 to 600. Maybe they're going to go from one shift a day to two shifts per day. What would happen to the BHR? Give this example a try on your own, pause the video, and when you're ready, push play, and we'll go through the answer together. So we don't have to do the calculation for step one because we've already established that three or four times at this point, right? So the total yearly cost for the press is 67,300. In this case, we're gonna divide it by 600 instead of 300 because we are increasing the number of hours of operation. When we do that, 67,300 divided by 600 comes out to $112.16, which cuts our BHR in half. This is advantageous to the company because now we can charge customers much less and still break even or even make a profit. But it also requires us to guarantee that the press will be in operation 
and billable for 600 hours. You can't just say, I'm going to operate for 6,000 hours so that my BHR goes down to $8 because it's not realistic unless you can actually operate your press or whatever you're billing um, for that number of hours. Okay, put it all together and give this next example a try on your own. What is the BHR for the printing press below? Instead of telling us the total billable hours per year, the company has told us how many hours per week the press will be in operation. Give this example a try on your own. The answer is on the next slide. So in this example, the, the calculations for the operating costs have already been calculated per year. So we can see that we pay $7,000 a month for our lease and that will cost us $84,000. We pay $1,175 for the insurance, which is $14,100 for the year. The average electric bill last year was $650, which means that for the whole year we paid $7,800. And then we used about $17,500 on maintenance, so we will budget for at least that in the next year. What's different about this is that instead of telling us how many hours the press is in operation, the billable hours are 12 hours per day, so they're running a shift and a half per day, six days a week, and they're going to be in operation for 50 weeks in a year. So step one, we need to sum all of our operational costs. 84,000 plus 14,100 plus 7,800 plus 17,500 sums to $123,400. So we need to make at least that much money to break even to cover our cost for the year. Step two, we actually have to calculate the billable hours. So when we see that it runs 12 hours per day, six hours per week, uh, sorry, six days per week, we can multiply 12 times 6 and get 72 hours of operation per week. It then tells us that it will be in operation for 50 weeks out of the year. So if we operate for 72 hours in a week and we will be, we will be active or billing 50 weeks in a year, 72 times 50 means that we can bill for 3,600 hours in a year. And then last, we'll take our total operational cost of $123,400 and divide it by our billable hours of 3,600, which comes out to $34.27 per hour. That's incredibly low for the BHR of a printing press. So we wanna make sure that we really can bill for 3,600 hours, um, or else it's unrealistic for us to consider that our BHR could be so low. When you are establishing a cost center, the steps that you will follow are Identify all of the cost centers involved in a particular operation. Everything that costs money. Then, calculate the yearly cost for those associated cost centers. So, if it's given to you in a daily cost or a weekly cost or a monthly cost or a yearly cost, make sure everything's comparing apples to apples by converting anything that's not in terms of a year to be yearly. Once you have the total cost, you're going to divide that by the number of hours your operation is billable. So this is never a set number and it must be calculated on, based on information that is provided to you and needs to be in the same format as the operating cost. Always compare apples to apples and we're gonna use years. So if someone tells you that it operates for 50 hours a week, you need to multiply that times the number of weeks it will be in operation. If it's given to you quarterly, you need to multiply it times four. Um, just make sure that it's accurate to the information you're being provided in the problem. And then last but not least, we will divide our total operational costs by the total number of hours that we plan to bill in a year, and that will give us our BHR. And that BHR will establish the absolute minimum we need to charge per hour for the number of hours that we're stating in order to break even. If we wanted to make a profit, we would increase that BHR and charge an additional amount. Um, but for our purposes, we're establishing the baseline BHR. After completing this lesson, you should be able to define what a budgeted hourly rate is. You also should be able to identify cost centers involved in creating a BHR, both for a printing company. We used uh, the time on press as an example, but you should be able to translate that to any industry um, specifically industry that you plan on entering 
after graduation. You also should be able to follow a systematic approach to creating a BHR. And then you are going for homework to establish your own working BHR. So for homework, you are going to identify a minimum of 10 cost center costs that you would incur if you were going to start your own business. That business can be anything that you want. I recommend it being something relating to your future goals. But for those of you that plan on being freelance artists or graphic designers, or you want to do animation on the side, you're going to identify a minimum of 10 things that would cost you money in your first year of operation. And then you're going to figure out how many hours you may be able to bill in that first year and use that information to calculate your total cost for the year, divide it by the total number of hours you will be in operation, and you will establish a foundational BHR for a new business that you're creating. Your business is going to be a new business, and we're going to view it as a freelance business, so you're only going to have one cost center. How much do you charge clients so that you can break even? Um, if you were starting a bigger company, you might want to have multiple BHRs, but for this first go around, assume it's a one person or a limited number of people business and that you're essentially going to charge for one service and that one service needs to cost cover all of your operational costs. I will give you a heads up that the homework for creating a BHR um, is rather straightforward. You're only establishing 10 cost center costs, um, but we're going to use that assignment for our e-portfolio signature assignment. So after you turn it in this week and it's graded, you are going to do a second pass on it and expand upon what you've created to make a more thorough BHR. So it's essentially important that you take the BHR test number two seriously and that you complete it thoroughly and on time so that you can receive feedback prior to having to um, expand upon it or redo it for your e-portfolio signature assignment. If you have any questions about creating a BHR, either to complete the exercise questions or to establish your own working BHR, please contact me during online office hours.